Hey, Internet, so quick game rant today. While I was working on my next BreadTuber episode, I couldn't help but notice an extremely stupid Twitter happening. Basically, a sequel to the nonsense I called out in my previous video, where they are saying our democracy, but really only meaning their democracy. And since the sequel, I'll be playing some Toho 7 again on the NES port. Anyways, for those not aware, there is currently a little anti-free speech war going on on Twitter. What's going on is that a lot of these blue check marks are now putting Elon in his place by pretending to be Elon Musk. And they think that getting banned for impersonation is somehow making a statement or calling out some kind of contradiction in free speech. Oh, well, you're not letting us impersonate people, so therefore it's not really free speech. No, really. That's unironically their argument. It's pretty interesting here. So the idea is you can't actually support free speech because, look, we still we can steal identities. And if you are against identity theft, then you are not actually for free speech. Checkmate, atheists. So if you ban identity theft, then why not also ban my hate speech and my misinformation like we want? For instance, this guy says, the world's richest man just banned cartoonist Jess Jackis from Twitter for making fun of him. Hmm, what did Jeff Jackis actually do to make fun of Elon Musk? Oh yes, he claimed to be Elon Musk. This tweet, of course, just completely conveniently leaves that fact out because he knows that would actually completely show the real reason why he got banned. He's not getting banned for making fun of Elon Musk, he's getting banned for impersonation. So it's just more intellectually dishonest, nonsensical gymnastics. Anyways. There's three big problems with their argument. The first is that it's a faulty comparison. Things like identity theft can actually be objectively proven. Person A is not person B, and by extension, if person B claims to, that they are person A to gain person A's property, that is an attempt at theft. For instance, if Mike tries to claim to be Todd in order to have the ownership of Todd's house transferred to himself, that is theft, because Mike is objectively not Todd, and Mike thus does not own Todd's property. On the flip side, things like hate speech are subjective. That's the main problem with hate speech laws, is that you cannot objectively prove what hate speech is, since the idea of hate speech is effectively just completely subjective to how people feel about it, or what people feel mean about and thus you end up having to have a Ministry of Truth in charge for deciding what is and what is not hate speech. And this can be shown to be very subjective and, and very poor reasoning just by pushing it to its logical conclusions. Like for instance, let's say that Twitter had hate speech laws, or let's just say a country has hate speech laws. However, the people in charge of defining and enforcing those hate speech laws are people who are racially motivated. And so they then define hate speech as only speech against themselves. You see the problem with hate speech now. It's, it's very easy for people to just kind of say whatever they don't like is hate speech because anything can be subjectively called hate speech. For instance, they could say that criticizing the government is hate speech because it it's counts as hatred towards the government. The reason that works is really just the criticism equals harassment grift that I've mentioned before on my channel many times. A lot of people are very, very bad at telling the difference between criticism and hatred, and because of that, there's kind of a thin line there that lets a very dishonest person to pretend that any valid criticism against A is hatred towards A, which allows them to then justify censorship of information that is factually true. So that's the problem with hate speech. Hate speech is subjective. And misinformation is a little bit less subjective, but it's it's far, far more difficult to prove than identity theft in an attempt of property theft. If Mike really did try to steal Todd's house by claiming to be Todd, something like that could be pretty easily be solved by an arbitration committee. It's generally not exactly difficult in a court to prove that person A is not person B. Or in the case of Twitter, it's fairly obvious that these people are not Elon Musk. But misinformation is quite a bit more complicated than that because multiple institutions can just lie about what is and what is not true. You have to actually go through the evidence a lot more in depth than just person A is not person B. So there's no real way to ban misinformation without a ministry of truth, which thus ends free speech again. Again, you have people who could potentially just ban criticism of the government because they don't like it. 
or ban the politics that they don't like and call it misinformation. So the concept of misinformation unfortunately ends up also being subjective because it ends up being subjective to the whims of whatever ministry is in charge of interpreting that. Comparing objective concepts to subjective ones like this, it's just not a valid argument at all. So again, it just goes to show how dumb these elites really are, how people in the blue checkmark cathedral don't really have a solid grasp on reasoning skills. Perfect example of why you shouldn't be listening to what they have to say, and it perfectly showcases how these people's opinions should not be considered more valid than anyone else's. And the second issue is that it's a catch-22. I guess we're kind of forgetting here that Twitter is an American company, and because of that, Twitter has to go by United States laws. So it's a catch-22. If Musk allows verified accounts to impersonate others, it could potentially put him in legal hot water. Why? Because identity theft is against the law in the United States, whether you like it or not. So if Musk refused to do anything about this and just ignored all the check marks who are engaged in this impersonation brigade, as what you can call it, they could just turn around and say, oh, Musk is allowing identity theft on Twitter. Musk is engaged in illegal activity. So it could be a spun against Elon no matter what he does about it, which just further goes to show how dishonest of an argument it is. They're not actually giving you any kind of intellectually honest defense of free speech here. These people are the same individuals, again, who think democracy without free speech is heckin' valid. None of these people actually believe what it is they're saying. And of course, top mind Ethan Klein had to join in on this, retweeted by Voosh, as expected. <laughs> again, the fact that these people unironically seem to think that they have a logically valid point here really just goes to show why you should not take these people seriously. Aside from just being flat out dishonest, they just aren't nearly as smart as they would like you to believe. Their third problem with this argument is, of course, that it's a private platform. Yes, actually, Musk has freedom of association. If he doesn't want people impersonating others on his platform, Elon Musk is free to do that, just like everyone else should have freedom of association. There's no reason why Elon Musk should not have freedom of association. And it should be noted that these are, again, the same people who were using the It's a Private Platform line when big tech censored things that the Cathedral wanted them to censor roughly three to four years ago. They have absolutely no consistent principles whatsoever. Their argument is effectively dumbed down to freedom of association for we, but not for thee. So no one should take that seriously whatsoever. The entire thing is really just a bunch of midwits throwing a temper tantrum because they aren't getting their way anymore. They don't actually have a valid point, and many of them probably know that they don't have a valid point. It's just silly drama and people thinking they have a good argument when, when they don't. Anyway, again, this is just a, it's a quick hot take here. I did not actually script this video at all. I am doing this in the middle of working on my next BreadTuber episode, which is going to be largely in direction to Second Thought. And it's actually going to be a partially collaboration with Liquid Zulu. So it'll be pretty interesting to see. There's actually going to be two videos. And it, you'll know what that means when we release it. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Till next time.